So here's a quick video um, just showing Swarm and Revit. Um, I don't know if this is blocking anything. Okay, so um, again, we're in Rhino. So on the right, again, you have this interface that came from a grasshopper definition, and you're able to reference things into that interface from the Rhino viewport. Um, and you know, we're currently in live mode, so as the user drags around points, we're actually sending a request to a compute server, um, all of the solves in the cloud, and we get back the results. So the fact that uh, Swarm is a cloud-based application, um, it means that you don't actually need a Rhino license to be able to run Rhino and Grasshopper on your system. So here, for instance, uh, we have a video of Swarm running alongside Revit. So in that case, we're not showing things in the Revit viewport. Um, we have our own sort of standalone viewer, very similar to what you see in the web app. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea of what you're getting as the output of the app, uh, and then gives you an option to actually bake it uh, back into the Revit scene. And again, you know, if you're not a Rhino user, um, you don't know anything about Grasshopper, you just work with Revit, um, you don't need to know anything about Rhino and Grasshopper. All you know is that there's this tool that you can reference things into and bake things out of. Everything else is being done on the cloud. Um, another cool thing is that we are actually now able to port some of the core tools uh, to Swarm and have different flavors of uh, a specific tool, right? So for instance, those of you who don't know, so this is Asterisk, which is our um, structural optioneering tool with an AI uh, backend. The idea being that you can feed it the massing and it will generate a wireframe for you. And based on that wireframe and the program and the facade type that you set, it will estimate um, steel sizes or concrete sizes uh, based on the building type uh, and give you kind of a preliminary, preliminary idea of what your tonnage is going to be, what your carbon footprint is going to be. Um, so that used to be a standalone application that you can, you know, Google and uh, go to Core Studio asterisk. Um, but now it actually runs inside of Swarm. And here you can see that you can directly bake out from uh, this tool into, into Revit. Um, just a couple other things. So you can, you know, uh, do some useful stuff on CSI. Um, for instance, you know, CSI is a fantastic analysis platform. It's not necessarily a great modeling environment. Um, so, you know, simple things like creating a tween of beams between um, two, two, two girders, you know, and baking them back out as actual BIM elements that can later be used in the analysis. Or you can do crazy stuff. So uh, this, is, this is a mesh that um, one of our uh, engineers uh, that also works for Core, uh, Norman, he was really excited about that because um, you, know, you can bake any arbitrary mesh out of Grasshopper, uh, in fact, right through Swarm and just run analysis on it. And he was like, yeah, you know, it, that would have taken months to model in CSI, again, because great analysis environment, not so great for modeling. Um, he got this in seconds and then spent some time just setting up, you know, constraints and running the analysis. Um, and just to kind of wrap it up, um, here's, again, we're running Swarm inside of Illustrator. Um, and we're able to, you know, bake 2D geometry into the Illustrator canvas. Um, and the cool thing about this is that, you know, Swarm operates in 3D, so you could theoretically uh, reference 2D geometry from Illustrator, feed it into a 3D app, do something crazy with it, um, and bake it out back into Illustrator, um, maybe as make 2D or something of a kind. Um, so again, for people who are not part of the Rhino ecosystem, so people like apparel designers or um, Illustrators, people not softwares, um, you know, they know Illustrator as their primary way of communicating their design ideas. Um, and they don't necessarily have the capacity, uh, like, a, let's say, financial capacity or inclination to spend thousands of dollars on Rhino license. 
um, and learn an entirely new skill, right? Uh, so now they actually have exposure to all these parametric tools um, to be able to work inside of their familiar milieu. Um, so this is kind of the end of uh, my brief introduction. Um, one thing that I want to show you uh, before I hand it over to Sasha for a live demo um, is how to install uh, Swarm on your system. And then I'll stop talking unless you guys ask some questions. Um, but you know, just to um, make sure that everybody's on the same page, if you go to swarm.thorntonthomasetti.com, um, and if you log in, this is very important. So if you are browsing around as a guest user, you have limited, um, th there are limited things that you can do, right? So you won't be able to download the plugins if you don't create an SSO account. So once you're actually signed in, you see your little icon, you can go here and go to downloads. Um, so this is where we have the MSI installer. So this thing is going to install Rhino, Grasshopper, Revit, and Illustrator. Um, if you, for some reason, don't have uh, admin privileges uh, to run all this on your system, um, or you know you're just not inclined to run MSIs uh, for some reason, uh, we have other zip downloads uh, down below, which we probably have to update now that I'm realizing that. Um, but yeah, so you will be able to install um, this manually. And I think we, we have instructions on how to do that somewhere. Um, but yeah, if, if you're able to, if you're on your personal machine, you have admin rights, just run the MSI, it will put everything where it needs to be and you'll be good to go. Um, so yeah, this is, this is kind of the general gist of Swarm. Um, if you guys have any questions before we move forward. Speak now or keep your silence forever. Um, so, uh, my name is Sasha. I'm also a member there's of Core question. Studio. Sorry, there's a question. Oh, oh there what is about a question. Dynamo? What about Dynamo? We don't speak about Dynamo. <laughs> no, so, um, so, so, so the main backend of Swarm is Grasshopper, right? So everything, <laughs> sorry, Dave. Um, everything, everything that you um, reference out of, you know, out of Revit, out of SAP, out of um, any platform that you're interfacing with, um, that all gets computed on the cloud through Rhino Compute and, uh, sorry, not Rhino Compute, uh, Rhino Inside and Rhino 3D MIO. So these are kind of new cloud-based technologies that McNeil, the company that makes Rhino, uh, came up with. Uh, so everything that you're doing going through Grasshopper. Um, Dynamo integration would be actually interesting because um, we have a Grasshopper plugin for Swarm, which sounds a little meta, like why would you work so hard to hide the Grasshopper definition behind an app and then bring it back to Grasshopper? Uh, but there are some applications such as you know, being able to uh, run remote solves from the Grasshopper canvas, right? So you can reference some geometry and then call into an app and that will, you know, maybe you'll, you're doing it from a 2005 laptop, a uh, very underpowered laptop, right? And uh, you want to do something computationally intensive, uh, you can actually do it in Grasshopper and compute on the cloud and it will spin up a giant AWS instance and to give you a result back, right? Um, or we're also messing with things like recursive apps that call other apps. So um, in terms of using Swarm as part of a visual programming interface, there's an interesting use case for this. Um, so to go back to your question, we haven't, we, we don't have a Dynamo plugin at the moment. Um, also, we aren't using Dynamo as a backend. Again, it's all Grasshopper. Uh, but that would be an interesting use case for sure. Uh, so maybe we'll put this on our roadmap for sometime in the future. Okay, if there is no more questions for Sergey. Then I would share my screen.
and I'm going to showcase the use of some uh, of the apps uh, that we've created for Swarm. And uh, um, so to launch Swarm from Revit, we would go to uh, Core Toolbox Alpha and then uh, click Swarm. And this will launch a standalone application uh, where we will have all the apps that we have installed from the marketplace. So uh, Swarm standalone consists of two parts, uh, where on the left you see the list of all your installed apps. And um, uh, it's frozen for uh, some reason. Um, Try it again. Yeah, it's really it's an interesting. So on the left, you have a list of the apps that you installed from the marketplace. And um, here again. And on the right, you have a 3D viewer that you already saw in some of the videos that where you'll be able to preview your uh, geometry before you bake it or do anything else with it. So let's try to run an app. This Create Revit Elements app that showcases which elements are currently supported uh, by Swarm in Revit and which app, uh, elements can be actually uh, created uh, in uh, Revit using Swarm. And it's frozen again. This is peculiar. So while, while it's loading, I just, um, I have this table created where uh, we can see on the left which um, elements are uh, native uh, Revit elements. And on the right, we see uh, what we can actually do with these elements in Swarm. So for most of this, we can uh, create them from scratch or just providing basic inputs. Uh, and um, be able to bake it to uh, Revit. Uh, to an empty Revit document. And the three at the bottom, which are reference plane, grid, and levels, they cannot be created at the moment, but we can uh, reference them from uh, existing Revit documents and modify them uh, as we want. So let's try that again. Oh, yeah. If, if we continue experiencing technical issues, uh, it works on my machine, so I can I, I can spin and you can talk over me, showing if this doesn't work. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, maybe you try that. Okay. Yeah. So let me uh, let me share my screen and then you'll just narrate. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, not the right button. <laughs> okay, so we have Swarm here. All right, so. Uh, nothing is frozen. Yeah. So, here is a Swarm player, and on the left is a list of apps, and on the right is a 3D viewer. When we get to the app, um, and a default safe state is loaded. So this is something that the author of the app provides and sets, and this is um, every app has a default state, so you you're able to preview geometry with some default parameters. But if you want to change something, uh, on the left, you see a list of inputs, which is, in this case, just a series of sliders. So when we move some of the sliders and click uh, Run the App, our geometry preview will update. And um, when we ready, when we 
satisfied with our geometry and we're ready to bring it to Revit. Uh, we, in the list of outputs on the left, we see all of the parameters. All of the different elements are split in different outputs. So if you click on one of them, uh, like slab curve, for example, on the Revit side, we see the slabs being created. Uh, notice how on the swarm side, uh, we uh, pre preview, we only see uh, the curves elements. But when we baked it to Revit, they became a native Revit element. Uh, so this is a, one of the specificities of Revit, when all the elements are represented by curves and have the parameters attached to it. So if you click on any of the elements, um, uh, yeah, you see uh, the three um, parameters that we attached, which is category, family, and type, uh, that make this curve become a native Revit element. So we can go ahead and bake uh, uh, framing and column elements. And same thing happens here when we have in Rev, uh, on swarm side, they only we only see curve, but when we bake them, we see um, actual framing elements with our specified family and type. Uh, so the walls uh, are represented by base curve, and um, we have uh, parameters of height attached to it. Um, Yeah, if you try the second um, second curve, not the second top curve. one, but not the top one, but the bottom, like a second one from the top on the yeah, yes one. All right, let's see. We got. It. There's a bit of a hiccup with the viewer, but uh, let's just go ahead and bake it out. So, baking our walls, and yeah. Yeah, so now we have our walls created. And um, uh, this uh, app just showcases which elements are currently supported by Swarm uh, and which ones can be created. This geometry uh, we're showcasing here is pretty simple, but it can be actually anything you want. So for the next one, um, I want to try share my screen again, if you don't mind. So I actually got this to bake. Um, and um, we cannot we not only create uh, elements in Revit, but also update, update existing ones. So, uh, for that, we go back to our list of apps just by clicking on Swarm logo. And I have update Revit parameters app created. So in the preview here, we just see one curve. And here in the inputs, it actually takes something referenced from Revit. So let's try to update uh, our walls here. So we pick, uh, we choose four elements in Revit and we double check the number four here. And when we click um, reference element, we just need to make sure that same number shows up here. So our four walls are now referenced to uh, swarm. And we need to make sure that this attribute we want to update actually exists uh, um, here on the Revit side. So walls actually have unconnected height parameters. So we're good to go. And we can change our height to, right now it's 15 feet, and let's change it to 25, for example. And when we click Run, we and uh, Zoom extends on our geometry. We see, again, uh, only our base curve for the wall. But uh, this base curve have attributes attached. If you want to check out the attributes, you click on the element, and you see the whole list of uh, parameters. 
So now we want to bring it back to Revit. And here we have a couple options. If you click bake here, uh, this will bake new elements to Revit. So we have four new walls created on top of existing ones. And in this case, we might not want it, but in some other cases, it might be useful. So if you just want to update existing ones and don't, don't create duplicates, we go to options here on the outputs. There is an options button and we turn sync mode on, which um, now when we click on this output, our original geometry will be updated. So now we have we don't have any duplicate element and our unconnected height is 25 feet. So same as we specified here. Um, and um, I would like now to go to Rhino and um, just show how to create um, an app that will uh, also an, update some of our elements in Revit that we already have created. So on Rhino side, uh, there is a plus button uh, which allows us to create a new app. So now we have an empty field here that we'll need to fill out. Um, under core apps tab, swarm authoring, there is a swarm builder component. We place it on canvas and we have our inputs and outputs uh, pop up on the right here. And um, let's uh, just in Rhino create a simple line for reference so we have something in our app. So this curve, we go to params, we choose a curve param and reference this curve, that one curve. This will eventually become uh, the geometry that we will reference from uh, Revit. Uh, and let's say we want to move it to a certain distance. In um, Y direction. So, and the, to specify the distance, we will use slider. So it's either from five to a hundred feet range. So now we have this two component, which is a slider that will change our distance and the original geometry that we want to modify. So these two will become inputs for our app. Let's first name them. So when we have a name for our component, we can plug into our inputs and we see it show up uh, on the right side in the input. And same thing we do with the slider. Just give it a name and plug it into the input. And now we have two inputs created. So here is our move geometry, but uh, if we just create this as an output, it will not be a native uh, Revit element because it doesn't have any attributes attached at the moment. Uh, so to uh, create attributes for this new geometry, we use extract swarm attributes component because this will be our Revit geometry. This will already have attributes attached when we reference it. So we plug it into extract and when we uh, run our app all the attributes that this geometry original geometry have will be um, extracted and what we need to do now is inject swarm attributes to our new geometry so we use the same attributes as the original geometry had and we uh, inject it with our new geometry with, that we just moved so, and now we have our new native uh, geometry in Revit created. And to make it an output, we just need to have a curve param where we plug in our new curve and give it a name again. Move element and plug it into the output. And we see it pop up on the right. So the only thing that's left to do is to give it a name. 
elements. And here we are ready to create our app. So we click on the button and we have a little window pop up that will ask us if we want to create a save state. So if you want to create um, save our values as default. We click OK. And something is not working. This is the beauty of being in beta, in alpha, actually, <laughs> not in beta. Second, I'll try this again. So since our app didn't create for some reason, I'm just gonna um, just quickly so, use the same geometry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, so there, there was a, uh, Sh Shannon is asking if somebody um, answered the question in the chat. Uh, so somebody asked uh, which programming language is used to develop swarm maps. That's kind of what we're showing right now. Um, so the back end is Grasshopper, uh, which is a visual programming interface for Rhino. OK. okay. App created successfully. So now we have an option to view this app online, which will take us to the uh, marketplace and the app page specifically, where we can edit app if we want, change the name, description. We can add an image here or a gallery of images, and also just uh, set some uh, settings so for visibility, price, and platform support. So we can turn on Revit right now here and just save our changes. So now we have our app created and let's go back to Revit and actually see it work. Oh. So we click again on the Swarm logo and our list of apps gets updated and now we can search for app we just created. Click on it and now we see our geometry that we had in uh, Rhino and also the um, that we specified as our default save state. So to move some of the frames, we select our elements here, and let's just use framing for now. So we have six elements uh, selected, and we reference those in Swarm, and we click Run. Uh, zoom extends to see our geometry, Let's specify a bigger distance so it's more clear. Now we have the original geometry in orange and the move geometry in blue or gray. Uh, so now here we have again two options. We either bake it, bake new ones, uh, new geometry, so it will be a duplicate in our Revit file. Right here, so we have duplicate of everything. All the six frames are duplicated. Or we go to options here and turn the sync mode on to uh, update the existing geometry. We have a warning, of course, that we can keep the elements joined, but uh, now the original geometry moved and we don't have any duplicates. Uh, and with that, I also wanted to showcase another um, app that reads the existing parameters 
and update them if necessary. Start counter app. So every frame and element have um, a property called number of stats. Sometimes it's or if it exists in the file, um, or sometimes it's empty if the elements were just created. But let's say we want to uh, create this parameter for all of the uh, this framing elements at once. So what we need to do again: select all the framing elements and uh, reference them to swarm. Make sure it's same number here as we have selected, and just run this app. So uh, now we have our same elements show up in the swarm viewport. And just to double check here, none of these elements originally had this number of stat property assigned. But when we run our app, now everyone has uh, something there. So to um, see that in uh, Revit, we just need to turn the sync mode on and click update the framing. And if we select an element now, and we go to number of stats, we see the number show up there. So same with all the rest of the elements. So this number was cal calculated based on the length. So it uh, actually this app saves a lot of time so you don't have to go and check one by one when you can uh, do and assign your stats all at the same time. Uh, are there any questions on running this um, Swarm Apps in Revit or maybe creating some elements? Okay. So. Well, while well, people might be collecting their thoughts, um, I want to show really quickly uh, just one more thing to kind of clear up the distinction between um, uh, b between beam elements and uh, kind of regular geometry. Uh, so let me share my screen. Cool. Um, so, you know, um, because we're crossing multiple platforms, right, we have to kind of deal with this idea of, you know, the, the way different applications think about geometry. So if you're in Rhino, or if you're an illustrator, like a curve is a curve or a line is a line, right? When you move to things like CSI or Revit, you start dealing with beam elements, right? So a column geometrically, it's not just a line, it's a, you know, a line for a central line and then it has a mesh that describes, um, you know, it's preview, how it looks, and it has like a curve for a profile and, you know, a lot of different things. Um, so this is why in order to translate from, you know, something like this, like we, we describe geometry in curves and then we add attributes to actually create beam elements, right? Um, but you should also be able to just bake regular geometry um, into Revit, right? So for instance, if we have, well, let's, let's pick something funky, right? Um, so for instance, we have this Ripple app, right? That just does something weird with a, with a curve. Um, so none of, those, none of the geometry has any Revit specific attributes attached to it, but you should still be able to bake it into your document. Now it will take a little bit because uh, there are quite a few curves. Um, so once Revit actually does it, okay, so we just baked, you know, some arbitrary crazy geometry um, that is not composed of beam elements, but this can be useful for, you know, like baking site curves, or if you have a very complex project that you need to create a beam model of, um, you can kind of directly translate this geometry and still have it accessible inside Revit. Or for instance, let's take some arbitrary mesh. Um, again, like, without the attributes, geometry is just geometry and we can still bake it and view it. So for instance, we have this, uh, we have this wonderful teapot. It's a mesh, which means I can bake it as just, um, I'm, I always forget what those are called in the, 
kind of like ge generic model elements uh, in Revit. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility in this regard, right? So if you go um, to the web app, for instance, right, um, and you see supported platforms, these are kind of suggested supported platforms. So this is what this app was designed for. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you can't run apps that hasn't been specifically designed for this platform. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all geometry, it's all meshes, curves, points. Um, and, you know, if you're not getting beam elements, you would be getting something else. Um, so there's a bit of kind of um, this, it's running a swarm app is kind of a democratic process, right? You, you, you can, um, you're free to run, execute, and bake any apps you want. Um, it's just some of them were specifically designed for the platform. You'll get meaningful beam elements out of them. Some of them you'll just get geometry, but that might be what you want. Um, so just another thing to throw in there. <laughs>